welcome to Dead Man Talking. Come with me as we step into the deep, dark forests. And let's hope that we make it to see sun up. Tonight's story is the final part in our series entitled The LBL Type 3. Without further ado, let's get straight into that. Crashing through the back door of the farmhouse, the men all rush to secure the windows, doors, hell, everywhere. All furniture was tossed up against the exposed windows in an attempt to protect themselves. Eventually, silence once again fell in the house as they all took a position and stared back at the tree line. Two men at the front, two at the back. Dad went thumping up the stairs after the brothers, who by now were up on the roof. Dee and Riz's eyes were to the far tree line, awaiting the vicious creatures to come storming out of the brush and branches of the trees. It was a long and eerie quiet wait. Nothing the breeze and the recovering breaths. The sun had now risen high in the sky, making it a hot and humid day. And there was a strange but definite anxiety looming over each man's mind as they kept a relentless watch on the surrounding lands. Why didn't they follow? said Dad. They were supposed to follow and hit the tripwires. We're sitting ducks. We're stuck like this. He added. I don't know, but we still have that element of surprise. We just got to pray that it takes enough of them out before they reach the house, said D. Riz was studying the small black notebook Monroe had dropped just before he was dragged back and underground. The little snake, said Riz with a shocked tone. He was planning on capturing a male and female. It says here, Two weeks ago, we had word of a cattle herd being slaughtered, agency on scene, flying out tomorrow. It appears to be a pack rather than just a rogue, given the 50 head of cattle torn to pieces. Looks like he's back, or possibly he's young. We'll update Chief in the morning. Oh my god, he was going to capture and then breed these monsters. Who the hell are these people? said Riz angrily with Monroe for his deception. Oh well, looks like he found his alpha. <laughs> said D, with Dad and laughing along. Said D, with Dad laughing along. Suddenly it wasn't funny, as Dad realised Mum and I were at some unknown safe house, 30 odd miles away. Surely there would be reinforcements as soon as they hear no word from Monroe or Buck, he thought. They headed back into the house and began demanding to know where we were being kept and if anyone else was coming. They was met with mumbles and a simple answer. Yes, there will be more men coming, sir. As to when, I can't tell you. Our communications are broken and down. But I'm sure they're fine. Don't panic, sir, said the soldier seemingly trying to take up the now vacant position of who was in charge. Eventually, after Dad had gotten some anger and stress out on the men, he headed back up onto the roof to call off and keep watch. Dee and Riz taking watch outside on the deck. Hawk remained quiet outside, walking backwards and forwards on the front deck. The sun was soon setting in the cool evening, casting long black shadows across the meadow around the house from the dark tree line. You think they would come tonight, brother? said Riz, while staring off to the forest. <sighs> I don't know, brother. I guess we can only wait and see. Just then, Hawk stepped back onto the deck and sat with the brothers. Hawk, man, how can you be running with these fools? said D. I mean, it's obvious that you're the only one who has experience with these creatures, 
Not to mention, you know how to wield a blade. He chuckled. Hawk eyed the brothers over and said, Yes, I have faced these hunters before. My people have lived alongside the Dogman for many, many years. Since the time of my ancestors to the present day, the battle never stops. He said this with a deep and serious tone to his voice. So they can be stopped? asked Dee excitedly. No, not stopped, but possibly moved on, for a temporary period at least. But they do always return. Just great, shouted Dee, furious with the whole situation. War was unavoidable now. It had already begun. Now we prepare. Now you fight for your home. You fight for his family and your life, said Hawk. It was now becoming clear that Hawk was a man of great knowledge and heart. He went on to explain that he was forced to assist these assholes, or they were going to ruin him. They had even threatened to kill his family in the most cruel way. When he finished, his head bowed to the floor, watching a line of ants scurry along the nest in the grass as it swayed in a humid, light breeze. The brothers D and Riz were outraged by this and started to cuss and tell Hawk not to worry, they will help him get his family back. Just then Dad came back out onto the porch, shocked at the news that he had just overheard, and then sickened by the thought he had actually packed us off to an unknown location with complete lunatics who had no concern about slicing somebody's throat open. What have I done? He screamed. Just then there was a loud crack from the forest, followed by two more. Then they could see the canopy of the trees falling down to the surrounding forest floor, birds desperately rushing out of the canopy and fleeing whatever that was. But they all knew it could only be one thing, as they all very very well knew. The tops of the trees then swaying erratically as one after the next was followed from both left and right. They were coming. The night sky would soon be fully black, but it no longer mattered. These hungry beasts were ready for war, and they were ready right now. There was an almighty deep howl that erupted as suddenly the tree line was breached and the pack descended to the property. A loud series of explosions went off all around the tree line and land as dogman after dogman came crashing through the brush and trees, some bipedal others on all fours, as the men reacted and set about unleashing hell across the land. For those who didn't trip the explosives, there were deep pits with stakes in the bottom covering the surrounding land. The loud and almost human-like screams of those dogmen who fell into them nearly drowning out all of the loud bullet storm that was taking place. Riz was up on the roof with Dee and Dad. Riz was taking aim and taking out dogmen who had got through the traps and explosives with a sniper rifle and a ballistic tip ammunition. Dee settled for the M4 carbine and Dad a 30 6 rifle, again both with harder hitting ballistic tips. For a while, it was working. The numbers were dropping like flies. But there couldn't be many more explosive left. Where's the Alpha? I don't see him, said Dad, staring at the horizon. Just then, an awful blood curdling screaming erupted from downstairs inside the house, followed by gunshots as Monroe's men desperately trying to get a large black dogman off one of the men in the back of the house. Apparently, it had smashed through the window and landed right on this soldier's back. The sheer weight of this creature swamping the man as they both fell to the floor and rolled. The dogman biting down with his huge canines directly into his neck, sending a fountain of blood up the room walls and eventually draining out across the beige carpet. As it swiped its giant claws, the fellow men towering above them, it snarled and growled as their shots seemingly hitting their target, but not having any effect. 
Aim for the chest and abdomen! Aim for the chest! Screamed Dee, and he, Dad, and Riz came thumping downstairs, just in time for one last shot to ring out. Then, silence. Silence, except for the heavy, wheezing breaths the creature made from the back of the house. Dad, Riz and Dee nodded at each other and slowly stepped closer down the hall towards the kitchen door. Gun smoke eerily creeping from the sides of the ajar door. Thump, thump, thump. They could hear as it moved around the kitchen, cups and plates all around smashing. Now it's clicking on the tiles as the dogman took each giant step. As they kicked the kitchen door open, then opened fire, the dogman roared and smashed into the kitchen counter, then lunged at Riz. Riz took a slash from the dogman's immense clawed hands, its freakish bony long fingers cutting through his shirt like a hot knife to butter. Riz fell to the floor as hot pain surged through his body. The dogman quickly pouncing on top of him, smashing and clawing madly like the wild animal it was. Dee screamed, no, and charged at the dogman, attacking his little brother, who lay helplessly on the kitchen floor, bits of his flesh, skin, and clothing coming off in ribbons as it continued its assault. Riz managed to stick the barrel of his gun into its huge jaws as it desperately attempted to try and bite at his face. Dee came crashing into the dogman's side with his hunting blade jamming into its neck as he tackled the enormous beast. And it worked, as he and the dogman flew over and into the wall of the kitchen with a loud crunch. The dogman's jaw collided with the hard wall, breaking one of its canines clean off. Dee jumped to his feet and was just about to pick up his M4 carbine and fill it with hot lead when an almighty roar came booming from outside. <laughs> All three men turned just in time to see the Alpha running on two feet a mere couple of metres away. By now, the other dogman had gotten back to its feet as it roared in unison right into Dee's face. He managed to sucker punch it before the unthinkable happened. As Dee screamed and started to fire his weapon through the window at the approaching Alpha, it jumped head first through the window and surrounding wall with an enormous blast of rubble and glass it crashed through directly at D. He had zero time to react as its sheer mass engulfed him and they both flew through the adjoining wall behind D. Dad and Riz both opened fire on the first dogman as it had jumped for Dad. He jammed the M4 into its open mouth and unloaded the rest of the bullets. This sent brain and skull fragments bursting out the back of the dogman's head, dropping it instantly to the floor with a loud and tremendous thud. Dee began screaming as the Alpha bit down on his bicep as he covered his face and neck, blood again spraying from the devastating wounds inflicted. As it was on top, it stopped and reached its enormous arm and clawed hand high above Dee. With a look of pure violence and enjoyment in its large black eyes. It brought it down aiming for his head, only I can imagine to smash his face and skull to a pulp. But at this very moment Hawk came running through Dad and Riz, who was still partially on the floor, jumping as he got closer and bringing his large hunting blade down into the Alpha's forearm, cutting again straight through its limb and severing it off completely. The Alpha roared in agony and turned in pure shock taking one second to look at its stump of a limb. Blood squirted in heavy flows on and off. Go! 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 Get to the car! I will hold them off as long as I can! Screamed Hawk. Dad nodded as he still remained firing on the Alpha as it fell and stumbled from the attack and blood loss. Dad grabbed Riz and Dee dragged himself off the floor as the three men made their way out the front of the truck. 
the roars and screaming of the Alpha echoing out the front door. Hawk could be heard shouting in his native tongue as Dad fired up the truck and was blowing a horn for Hawk to come. Two more dogmen rounded the corner of the house. One was considerably larger than the other and a huge eight feet tall. Again, this one had those cold, killer black eyes. The other appeared female and only stood around six feet or so. The big one, he was jet black color, the same as the Alpha, while she had a more gray ash color to her fur with red or amber eyes. Either way, they were heading straight for the truck. Riz by now was in and out of consciousness after losing so much blood. Dee screamed, it's okay little brother, you're strong, it's, it's just a scratch. Come on, come on, come on, don't you die on me. He screamed. Just then, Hawk came running out of the house and jumped the steps off the porch. Dad gave him some cover fire and sprayed a howl of bullets at the male and the female as they turned to attack him. Soon, he was followed by him, the Alpha. Hawk just entered the truck as Dad hit the gas, sending gravel up into the air as it launched the truck as fast as it would per permit him. The Alpha roared and gave chase, closely followed by the other two dogmen. We need to go faster! Dee was screaming as Dad pushed his old Bronco to its limits, sliding out of the property and onto the game trail. Where are we going? screamed Dee. We have to end this now, said Dad. We can lead him to the boathouse on the lake. It's about a mile and a half from here. The speedometer climbing to 65 mile per hour as they slid around bends in the trail. All the while, the dogman close on their tails. The truck taking an immense beating from the brush as it whipped and crashed against the body and windows of the truck. Do you see him? said Dad. No, no, I don't think so, said Dee. Wait, wait there added Hawk as he pointed to the treetops swaying violently back and forth towards their direction. It's him! It's him! said Dad looking into his wing mirror. Just then, the old boathouse came into view. It was old, but it was strong, built many years before by loggers for storage and a workshop. It's the only idea I've got, but it might just work. There was a small boat down the jetty. We need to trap them inside somehow. There should be enough fuel and chemicals in that building. Hopefully some old aviation fuel from the seaplanes. That should help blow them sky high, said Dad. Dee and Hawk nodded. Okay, sounds like a plan, said Dee. Apparently, as they approached, the truck came screaming over a crest of dirt and launched into the air in a dramatic Dukes of Hazard-esque way said Uncle Dee, chuckling as he remembered that fateful night. They didn't have long as the tree branches breaking and snapping in the distance grew louder and louder, accompanied with the familiar yips and haunting roars as the violent beasts came closer and closer. Get him down to the boat, said Dad to Dee, as the men jumped out of the Bronco and began running for the boathouse. Dee nodded and said to my father, I will be right back, you crazy old man. You better save some of the action for me, you hear? Dad shot him a smile and grabbed his hand and then said, Go now. Hawk was inside tipping over chemicals and fuel drums as Dad ran into the boathouse and shut the door. He saw them coming, like a pack of hungry wild dogs jacked up on meth. They burst through the canopy of the trees, each landed with a massive thud on the dirt. D had just made it to the boat. He said he even felt it, even out on the jetty, the large dull thump, as three enormous bipedal creatures landed and began searching for Dad and Hawk. Soon they picked up on the scent and they descended on the boathouse. Beating the old wooden walls as the Alpha howled another bone-shaking guttural howl. Then, as it thumped its way round the boathouse, growling and sniffing loudly, it ran its clawed fingers horizontally across the boathouse walls with a horrendous grinding or scratching noise as it did so. The other two took to the roof, trying to breach it 
from above. D said he sat there with his brother wrapped in an old woolen blanket. It was grey and dead looking already from blood loss. He watched as the small back service door opened. Thinking Dad was going to come running out, he sat up. But then Hawk came running at breakneck speed, jumping straight into the lake and swimming for dear life as the dogmen all turned attention to the mad attempt of an escape. And then back to the open door. What the hell is he doing? said Dee to himself as he watched Hawk get closer and closer, swimming through the low laying blanket of fog on the moonlit lake surface. He watched as the three dogmen rounded the corner and down off the roof towards the open door. Still, no sign that Dad was coming. The dogmen slowly creeped to the entrance, moaning and snapping at each other, but still clearly the Alpha was in charge. Then they entered. Uncle D's face dropped as each one disappeared into the boathouse darkness. Just then gunshots erupted as Dad ran out from behind barrels near the doorway, desperately trying to get to the doorway, but he tripped and fell and hit his face hard on the cold hard floor. Dazed and bloody he tried to get back up, but but it was it was too late. Uncle Dee never told me what happened next until really a few years ago, when I was old enough to understand why he did what he did. As Dad was trying to get to his feet and away from these monstrous beasts surrounding him, it happened. The Alpha reaching down grabbed him by the leg, up off the floor like a damn ragdoll, and then threw him to the boathouse wall with a tremendous crunch. The other two pounced on him and began tearing and mauling him like a damn chew toy. No! screamed Dee, as he could do nothing but watch this nightmare unfold in graphic detail. Hawk started the motor on the small boat. Dee shot him a teary glance of pure terror and heartache. Then, as he glanced back to see Dad half in and out of the door, he said, that is when Dad made an almighty scream. It was like one last primal age old human war cry as Dad cursed words that I cannot repeat here. Reaching for his gun, he aimed and fired. Boom! The whole boathouse exploded, lifting it high right off the foundations. Smoke, rubble and wood flying high up into the night sky with a huge orange fireball and glow breaking through the pitch black night's darkness. No, no, that's not what was supposed to happen, said Dee. With Riz now back into consciousness, confused and in need of immediate medical assistance. Hawk opened the throttle up on the small boat as they all headed out on the lake towards the next town, over two miles down the lakeside. Uh, did we make it? Did we win? Said Riz, looking up to his older brother above him. Yeah, yeah bro. We made it. We, we won. Get some rest and I'll, I'll wake you when we get to a hospital, okay? Get some rest. Said D. As the men drive further away from the boathouse, a huge orange glow came from the fire. In the pitch dark night, casting strange shadows on the back of the lake and nearby tree line. One very deep, low growl erupted from the forest behind the fire. Was that the Alpha? No, it sounded different. But how? thought D. I think it's his son, a new Alpha. This is not over. But he will be gone for a while. Whilst he is, no doubt, healing and regrows his pack. It's just what they do. The Type 3D is never satisfied and always hungry. He will remember us all and return someday, said Hawk. D 
looked at his brother Riz, who now slept from sheer exhaustion and wounds. Then over at Hawk, without any words, the men nodded in agreement. Bring them on, said D angrily. Bring them on. Wow, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series as much as I have writing it. Um, really, really incredible experience. Uh, your feedback support has been really humbling and amazing. I, I never ever expected any of this type of feedback at all. I can't thank you guys enough. Um, also, it's just been a, a wonderful experience penning down a story. Um, I haven't wrote probably since I had to in, in school. so. <laughs> that's my my level of writing but um i really really do appreciate everything you've said to me um whether it be negative you know negative feedback or positive it's been wonderful i hope you guys enjoyed it of course please do let me know down below as ever please do like and share if you haven't subscribed to dmt to join the family please smash the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date with all dmt content and remember guys if you're taking a trip to the land between the lakes, remember, above all, be safe, not sorry.